hair. Oh, it sucks. Then <laughs> plain white cotton sock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'd be royal blue. Hmm? Canary yellow. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> uh, today we're going to be making sense of life through Maudie. Yeah, 2016 movie, I think, based on Maudie, a woman who lived in rural Nova Scotia and went through a rough life, but never let go of her burning need to paint. Follows her life as her brother sells the home that she was entitled to half of, their parents' home. And so she's living with her aunt, who's not a pleasant woman. Neither, Neither is the brother. Neither is the brother. Not a, not a fun family. She doesn't have much in the way of help. But she, as she's in the corner store, she hears of a guy that needs a housemaid. And uh, she takes him up on it, eventually convinces him to take her on. He didn't want to because she has uh, physical challenges. Yeah. Like, uh, like one of her legs seems to be shorter than the other and she yeah. struggles to walk. Yeah. Also, she seems to have like um yeah. something with her back yeah yeah she she kind of walks in a yeah. in a hunched kind of way yeah and so he sees her and thinks i don't know if you're going to be able to take on yeah housework yeah but she um, persists she's stubborn and eventually he takes her on yeah. and they end up forming a relationship eventually they get married mm -hmm. and uh she first just just paints uh the, the inside of the house and a woman that comes by for fish she likes her drawings she asks for her to commission some, and eventually word spreads, gets to the point where she's an international phenomenon, President Nixon, or Vice President at the time, of ordering uh, a painting from her. So she makes the rounds and then carries on to the rest of her life until she passes away. And they stay in the same place the entire time, a small little, basically one room house with the upstairs. Gosh, yeah, we just, we just watched it and... Of course, uh, broke my heart and I was just in tears and I'm still tender. Yeah, <laughs> right I knew now. it was going to be sad. So that's why I seem kind of, if I seemed a little dazed, yeah. that's why. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it, it was sad, but it was also really heartwarming too. Which is interesting too, because at the, be you know, at the beginning, the rough and tumble, stone cold, horny handed Everett, <laughs> um, you know, he seems like he's he, her. Uh, he yeah, he at one point in the beginning, he, uh, he hits her because she basically was talking to his friend. Well, the friend was kind of... The, the friend was making fun of the situation. Yeah. Why is Everett having a lady who's literally living in yeah. there? Where do you sleep? Yeah. This place is kind of small. Yeah. She was just kind of like, oh, there's plenty of enough space for yeah. both of us. Because she's really um, a very intelligent, mm -hmm. funny lady. Yeah. And so she get, he gets upset with her mm -hmm. for doing that and answering yeah. all the questions that his friend is asking. And then asks her to keep... She, he keeps asking her to go back into the house mm -hmm. and... And she's, she doesn't, and then um, he hits her, and then she goes in. But she then goes yeah. back into the house. And, uh, and that's the thing, is that your first impression is, wow, this guy would do that in front of this. Yeah. And then the other guy, you know, I mean, it's an issue that he doesn't speak up or do anything. Everett probably learned it, I'm sure, from, you know, it passes down from his parents. or. Well, I mean, he was actually an orphan. That's right. Mom yeah. went from the orphanage, most so, likely. So, yeah. And that doesn't make it right, but from what they so, show in the movie, that was the only time. And eventually yeah. it goes through the movie, uh, throughout the movie. Um, he starts to, they warm up to each other and yeah. eventually they actually form a really, a really supportive, loving, loving relationship. relationship. Yeah. yeah. I love that it's actually a true story mm -hmm. because uh, I love that it's a true story, but it also makes me even more sad because Maudie comes from this family because of her physical challenges and also her mind. It's not something that they really understand and they just kind of write her off as incapable. Yeah of taking care of herself and just basically of being taken seriously. We find out later that she had a baby and they pretended that they took her away immediately yeah. after she was born, pretending that the aunt and the brother the just decided brother to sell the baby, yeah. decided to lie to her and say that she died. And yeah. Maudie goes through her life thinking that the baby died. The part of the movie that I thought was very powerful and, and, and just interesting. And at one point when she starts getting successful and the aunt and brother can't help but take notice, uh, the aunt, when she tells her that her daughter, Maudie's daughter, didn't actually die. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, you're the only one in the family that's actually happy. You're the only one in our family who ended up happy. Well, yeah, I suppose it did. <laughs> I don't 
want to die. Full of regrets. It's, I think uh, it's not an uncommon thing. I think it happens in a lot of families and a lot of people you know, all around the world where there are a lot of bitter, resentful, sad people. And then they see the few people in the family that seem to find a way to keep going in life and, and have that internal spirit keep going. And they want to crush it, but may, really just because they, they don't understand it and they wish they had it and they don't know why the other person has it. And the answer is, I think, something to the degree of like, was it like, I, I don't want to... Have regrets. Have regrets. Because at this point she was getting sick. Yeah. And so she's, um, she said that, like, I'm dying. I don't want to have regret. This is yeah. what happened. Then she tells her about the daughter. Yeah. But yeah, before she says that, she practices it with that, with mm -hmm. the, you're the only person in the family um, who ended up happy at this yeah. point. You know, yeah. um, Maude, Maude and Everett are just are in a solid marriage. Mm -hmm. She's had, she's been on TV. Yeah people of uh are writing newspapers newspaper. yeah yeah they're they're getting the news she's yeah. in the news and yeah. the brother at that point actually even goes to visit Maudie mm -hmm. and says you know i can actually make you more money mm -hmm. if, if you come with me i can make you yeah. more money she's like you can buy something mm -hmm. and then everett is just kind of like are you gonna buy it or not people don't need a lot of money but you need a little bit to survive and mm -hmm. people don't need a lot of socialization and a lot of human interaction connection but you need a little bit to survive yeah and if you don't have any of either, it's very easy to get exploited. You know, yeah, a lot of people absolutely. will be thrown into very desperate situations, even just to make a little bit of money in horrible work conditions. But same thing with relationships. People will find themselves clinging on to the worst kind of relationships with people just because they have nothing else. Exactly. But once Maude was able to get, you know, in, in the beginning, not a great relationship with Everett, but it was still better than the family. Yeah. And she still had some autonomy and she started to, be able to be more confident in herself. So then when, you know, they get to the point where the brother who probably is expecting he'd be able to still have Madi wrapped around his finger like mm -hmm. he used to, and all of a sudden she's like, okay, what, you know, are you going to buy a painting or get out? Like, I don't need you anymore. Yeah. You know, I, I'm actually able to take care of myself. Yeah. She just tells him, yeah, you should yeah. leave. Yeah. Whereas before the last interaction, she was crying that um, he was leaving her at the aunt's mm -hmm. place. And he's just very shocked at her independence. Mm -hmm. And you're right; it's it's really true. It it just shows you how important how important it is to have that connection with people uh, in life. You mm -hmm. know that really meaningful connection with people, yeah. like mm -hmm. people that really care about you, mm -hmm. and that you are certain of their love for you. Mm -hmm. Once you have that, everything else, and you've seen truly how love looks like, I think Everett and Madi give that to each other. They finally find actual empirical um, evidence of the reality and truth of love. And once you have that, especially having had not have it, had it before, once you have that, why would you even want to go back to yeah. the to the you know the bleak yeah. existence that you, that that you had before yeah. you guys met. Also the thing about having that kind of love that you that Maudie and Everett find within each other is that it gives you that strength to say no and gives you the confidence to never settle again mm -hmm. for less. Mm -hmm. Before uh, Everett, Maudie only had the aunt and only had the brother and she really didn't understand, she didn't see the extent of their unkindness mm -hmm. to her. They both are able to grow with just having that support because Everett too was stuck in a rut, didn't trust anybody, didn't want people around. And then you could see over the time together, their time together, he does start to warm up and starts to proactively want to notice when she needs help or take care of her whereas before he was just like well you're on your own basically yeah you're yeah. living here but i'm not going to think at all about what you need you yeah. know and then they get to the point where like i i really like the scene where the woman who first notices mod's paintings and wants to pay a lot of money for them everett's of course like yeah hey, sure five bucks all right yeah, yeah so this one's so. and then mod really starts getting upset she's like no they're not finished yet yeah and, and there's two things i really like about it so first um, it's that feeling that anyone who basically creates anything goes through that not only, first of all, it's really tough to ever get to the point where you feel like something that you created is finished. It's usually yeah. just taken away from you. It's very rarely do you ever feel like, yeah, I'm ready to actually be done with that one. But when it isn't, it's definitely, it feels like it's not finished and it is being sold to someone or being taken away and it's not yours anymore that really can hurt because it feels so personal to you. When she's painting, these things are for her. Mm -hmm. they, she's not doing this thinking, I'm going to monetize this. Mm -hmm. She does it, for example, when she's sad, right? Mm -hmm. Like after Everett hits yeah, her, yeah. you see then she starts yeah. 
painting, right? This is the thing that calms her yeah. down. She does this for the fulfillment of it, what it gives her. She's looking out of the window. As she yeah. says that one of my favorite things to do is to look out of the window. Yeah. The whole world framed. What yeah. a beautiful yeah. uh, phrase. I hope you can capture yeah. it and put it in here. Yeah. Another window. The whole of life. The whole of life already framed. So for her, art is, number one, an extension of herself. Mm -hmm. And uh, primarily, art for her art is, you know, it's a part of her. It's, it's the thing that makes her connect yeah. to the beauty of life, which a lot of everything else in her life wasn't that. Yeah. But then art allows her to connect to that, you know, yeah. the things that she sees nature that yeah. are natural and that people cannot tarnish. Mm -hmm. She's able to capture that and no one can take that away from her, mm -hmm. not someone like her brother or her aunt, no matter how unkindly they treat her. Yeah. And this is a gift that she's been given and she honors it, you yeah. know? Well, well, that's why I think she reacted so, she was so upset because yeah. it, it feels like she part of her was being sold yeah. and getting owned by someone else, right? And, and yeah. when she- Just sold like that. Yeah. yeah. The other part of when, you know, they first decided to sell some of her paintings and she was getting upset. And then Everett noticed. At first he was like, this is more money than probably, you know, I've ever made yeah. in like a month or something. Let's, what do you do? But he saw just how upset she was getting, and he's like, oh, "I'm just kidding, they're not for sale." Yeah, you know. And so you could already see. He already That's when to the see. Yeah. yeah, the relationship is starting to form. Yeah, we've talked about finding love, then allows you to basically not be desperate for other relationships that may not be as fulfilling. Everett, for example, mm. this is what he also gets from from Lottie because he was, he grew up uh, as an orphan. We later find that out. And you know, he's, he lives alone, very isolated, and he doesn't really seem to have that kind of respectable yeah. place in the world, yeah. you know? You can see that he has that sense of himself too. I think it's also based on how people interact with him. And so he has that grumpiness and mm. just that feeling of inferiority and he's not happy about it mm -hmm. and i remember even when Modi then is now getting famous you know with all these news networks coming over to interview him newspapers etc he's kind of starts to get a little bit intimidated and yeah. concerned that oh no I, I remember even the aunt says oh you struck gold something like that mm. and he just starts getting it in his head oh my gosh you know she's probably gonna leave me right he, um she can now do better she can do much thing. better yeah. yeah i think he mentioned says yeah. that like you can do better yeah. and, and she's like, no, and she's like i couldn't do better yeah. and i'm like Ugh. just beautiful these two people she enjoys painting she knows what painting gives her yeah and it's just when someone recognizes it um, especially considering her background when someone recognizes this thing um, especially coming from a place where every single time she's knocked down all the time mm -hmm. it's that thing that someone kind of digs you out of that darkness and says here this light that you see in yourself it's true it's real yeah. hold on to that yeah. light everett also does get that from from her she sees uh she sees him in a way that, that she's never been seen before. Yeah. And when someone loves you like that and sees you in this beautiful, magnificent way, you mm -hmm. can start to see it yourself. Yeah. You start to see it yourself and that's the greatest gift that you get from love. Yeah. Because sometimes as people, we are so insecure about ourselves and we beat ourselves down. We don't wanna see the good in us, but then you meet that person that really makes you whole in that beautiful, fulfilling, giving way, yeah. supportive way. And that person, you start to see them yourself through their eyes mm -hmm. and in the end you start to believe your believe in yourself just as much as they do yeah. and that was the thing that unfolds in this movie i used to have this thing growing up worrying about what mark will i leave in the world mm -hmm. when i pass will people remember me or i'll look at other people that i cared about i saw them for who they are how magnificent they they were they didn't have any kind of talent like Maudi, for example but they were such beautiful souls and they had their own gifts so i would i used to worry about how so many people in the world um especially people that i of course worrying about people that i i loved i was thinking when they're not here anymore people won't know how magnificent you know they are you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Always imagining something like what happened with Maudie, right? Where finally the world is aware of this magnificent person. But then I was just thinking about um, looking at Everett. The world doesn't really know how how uh, incredible Everett is. Mm -hmm. Only Maudie knows. Right. And I was thinking about this at the end of the movie when she's gone. I was reflecting back at how I used to have 
uh, how, how I, I would look at life in that way where yeah. I was constantly worried about it's it's not just it's not fair mm -hmm. that the people that i know are amazing people the, the world won't know mm -hmm. because they don't have the specific skill specific skill but i think in that time i was always kind of looking at things from an external world view i, I suppose i was kind of um externalizing my pers my validity right. or these people's validity right. in a sense of it only really matters if other people attest to it right. but um, with this movie, I think it, for me, really helped me ground myself again. Cause you know, obviously I, I think I've been, I've been working at the, on that and I, and I think I'm, I've gotten to that point, but this movie is just one of those things that, that life gives you, I think, to ground you in those convictions that are really positive. And for me, it, it did that with this in the, in the, in the sense that of reminding me how little what other people think of you mm -hmm. matters yeah. and how just one person mm -hmm. can make all the difference in what they think can make all yeah. the difference and and that's it yeah you know what i mean people that don't know you you know it with Ma matter. with Maddie and everett the people that don't know them doesn't matter to them at all what exactly. they think i think she even says that at one point she's like well, what do you care what they all think because he's getting upset with all the people coming yeah. around all the time and she's like it doesn't matter exactly. what matters is what you and i think of each other yeah and we know we know what we're like even when they started to get more successful they just they didn't even change anything they, they didn't need to exactly and they were happy the for me i would say lastly thing last thing I'll, I'll add for myself is it's again it's another uh inspiring story for really anyone that wants to make any mark exactly or you don't have you know but not even making a mark but just following what you what gets you up in the morning what your what says makes your spirit say yes what's mm -hmm. your passion right because it shows that someone that just decides to do something that they love. Someone even kind of points out that it's mean, but they're like, she's not even that good. Like my kid could do better. Yeah. I mean, it's rude and it's not necessarily true because like people, why they're drawn to it is it's a very distinct style. And, and people can tell that honesty in that she does it that way. And that's why she, and she likes to do it that way. The fact that small rural, you know, out of in the middle of nowhere spot, this person that just has a passion for painting gets to be commissioned by the president of the United States. And it's just, just it, it can it can show you that yeah if if you just follow a passion again doing it just because you love it don't expect to get the president to want to talk to you or anything but that kind of level of honesty and passion and and just true decent spirit and and the soul of a person can really inspire and can really spread you know to all uh, far reaches you know very far reaches of the world I was just thinking about how Maudi does have so much of an impact, but these are not the things that matter to her, to her. It's just the main lesson for me is just that realizing how imp how much how the only thing that truly matters mm -hmm. is your own self satisfaction. Yeah. Um, and everything you do in your life. Yeah, yeah, basically whatever it is that you're you're doing in your life has to be rooted in your own individuality your own innate needs and it has to be rooted in you servicing that servicing your specific needs that only you know mm -hmm. and independent of what anybody else thinks about it there's always going to be something that you do if mm -hmm. if and that people don't like right mm -hmm. there'll be someone yeah. that criticizes you etc yeah. and then and if you are not doing if if whatever it is that you're doing that they're criticizing if you are doing if you were doing it primarily to get accolades and to get validation externally then it's going to knock that down it's yeah. never going to be yeah. it stops becoming fulfilling yeah. because the reason you're doing it isn't for you but yeah. it's for other people yeah however if you are doing it for yourself yeah. and your own personal fulfillment yeah. um as Monty does then no matter what anybody yeah. says, even if the president didn't buy it, it yeah. wouldn't matter. Yeah, she'd still do it. She'd still do it, and it's just enough for her, mm -hmm. you know? This lady who's getting commissioned by the president or vice president of the U.S. still is living in her own room house mm -hmm. with her husband mm -hmm. um, who sells fish mm -hmm. and wood, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And and she's perfect, and that is enough for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bottom line, start with doing things for you and nothing else should matter. The lastly, lastly thing I'll, I'll add that I liked is when the storekeeper, I think it was said, you know, well, people pay for this, these paintings, like my kid could do better. And then everyone's like, but he doesn't. 
<laughs> and that's the key difference, yeah. right? Is there probably are a lot of people that could do certain things better than people that end up getting a claim or noticed, yeah. but they but don't. But they don't. Right? Yeah. And, and, and there is a lot of, I like the, what is it, 90% of life is showing up. Or like it actually takes a lot to also just do the thing. You know? Exactly. And Even if you could be absolutely amazing, yeah. you could be the most intelligent person, yeah. but that person who isn't far from as close to your capacity yeah. is succeeding yeah. because they are actually taking action yeah. and you aren't. Actually engaging and yeah. then doing stuff and putting themselves out there. That's a whole other thing on top of whatever the actual skill set. Yeah. Yeah. So when Maudie passes away that really made me it just broke my heart because i was like man these two people what they gave each other what is um ever gonna do i oh god i'm getting emotional again i was just because i was thinking both of them they really just had each other because both of them were abandoned realistically even though Maudi wasn't necessarily an orphan like ever was the family just completely wrote her off mm. And so they were their first experience of real, yeah. true love mm -hmm. and being cared for mm -hmm. um, in that meaningful way that I think everybody, all of us wants to, to, to be cared for. And so when, when she passes away, I'm oh my God, I just broke my heart. And I remember even before she, she can, she's sick and she knows that it's, ha it's coming. And she's like, you should have gotten more dogs. You should get more dogs. And of course she's saying that we know that she's saying that because she recognizes that my days are numbered yeah. and I don't want you to be alone. And I was just like, oh my to have that kind of love with someone in life is is incredible. But then when it's when the person passes away, I know that you people die and that's the way of life. And it's also that thing that you kind of have to remember to value the time you have with the people you care about. But it just made me it just broke my heart knowing that and now he's alone and gosh, you know what I mean? When she passes away. Um, she just says, I was loved. Mm -hmm. She doesn't talk about the paintings and no, all these no, things that, and how other people thing. loved her. Yeah. Um, how the only thing that really enriched her life mm -hmm. was being loved yeah. by Everett yeah. and loving him. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And so that's why it broke me. Oh my God. Come here. Come here. Very beautiful movie, very sad though. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we took yeah, from Maudie. A lot of, uh, lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah great movie, recommend. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, Stunning. But yeah. Incredible. You guys have seen it though? What did you, what'd you think of that? Yeah. Maudie, if there's anything we missed or, you know, if you agree with the stuff, let us know. Yeah. Yeah. Comment down below. Comment down below. Mm -hmm. Share, Share your, your thoughts, thoughts on our thoughts. thoughts. <laughs> yeah, until next time, that's a wrap. Bye.